Yeah, I am yeah. not. I am not historic. My my personal history is not one filled with a lot of patience nor humble humility. Let's just put it like that. Yeah, I would agree with you. Oh, well, not about you, but about me, because well, you I agree about me too. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I just I think that that's something that I tell. It's like a little bone I'll toss to people who I'm like lecturing at my job about mm. like you know your your problem is addiction is it's just pretty much unregulated self-love basically and, yeah that's what it and is. so like i'll just like drill into them but then i'll be like but us americans are not really taught how to suffer you've been raised like pretty much your entire life mm. to pretty much be as self-indulgent as you want to be and like, there's mm. nothing wrong with that. And it is until like, cause I'm like, I have some, I don't have a lot, but I have some time in the church and I can see that like, it's, and it's shocking to me how deep my selfishness is like my, my inability to oh, wait. Yeah. And it's like, uh, that's a well that does not really run dry. It just yeah. kind of keep finding out through different ways. Like, man, I really, they have a hard time thinking of other things besides me bro said so well Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. And <clears throat> some people are kind of want to probably skip this intro. It's, I don't really, I, I just thought of this like not too long ago. But like, this could be something to talk about for a little bit. So definitely, you're going to want to probably timestamp this one. But <laughs> what are your guys' general thoughts about Wu Tang? Like the, 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 the movement, the music? Like the music. Like, what do you guys think of that? What, what do you guys think of that? Their rap collective. I, think I mean, what, Killer Bees, the Wu, right? The Wu, so. yeah. the Wu Tang Clan. You guys down with Wu? I mean, they're. I, I mean, obviously groundbreaking. There was nothing. There's nothing that was has like there, it. There's never been anything. There's not. Like there's them. never been anything like there hasn't. Since. No, I was just thinking mm-hmm. about this. I was listening. No. They're unique. A completely unique uh, sound. I was listening Feel, to Three Six Chambers vibe. and I was just like, oh, dude. it's just like, this is just a gem. It's just a gem. Yeah. Like, it's just a wonderful yeah. little, like, and not even because I think it's perfect, because it's not perfect, I don't think, but it was just so cool. And I was listening to it. And I was like, it had been a while since I had, like, really jammed it where I could, like, sit and kind of focus on it a little bit. And I was like, in the next couple of days, I'd like to talk to someone about Wu Tang. So that's what I'm, I'm holding you guys hostage. I think I think the interesting thing about Wu Tang, and maybe I, I may be I may be like beyond my depth here to say that they're to say that Wu Tang is probably I mean t- to me Wu Tang seems like if there was going to be an authentic, a vibe that was authentically sort of an analog of punk, in hip hop, yeah. yeah. it would hmm. be Wu Tang. Yep, for hmm. sure. That's a totally valid. And the thing about Wu Tang too is like. I don't know. Someone's gonna, you know, clickety on this one, but it, it feels like that word often that word authentic, and it just they're one of the few things, few groups that came out that just felt like they didn't have the sure down the line, whatever. They had some other stuff going on, obviously, but they sure. just didn't feel like they had that weird industry plant feel. Yeah. No, you not know at all. Mean? Yeah, they they didn't have it at all. And even like, because uh, I mean, I don't know. You even get into you know when they when they break apart. You know, it's like Bobby Digital was an incredible album. Liquid, Liquid Swords, Swords. Liquid, Liquid Swords, Swords is yeah. just <laughs> incredible. But Jizz's album after that was even really good too. Yep. Um, yep. But they're 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 weird because they 
it was their authenticity where people would it, it, it was weird because like in the in the late 90s early 2000s i was pretty i mean and because of the friends that i was hanging with and and like where i was and what i was doing like i was pretty enmeshed in the underground hip-hop scene that was running like parallel to the rave scene right and so like i've seen i, I remember like six or seven of them showing up to like the glass house in pomona mm -hmm. late at night on like in like 19 this is probably nine maybe 99 2000 and there was like 30 people there and these guys were already platinum artists and like eight of them just showed up at like two in the morning. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And just, but, th but this was like the, th this is like what it was. They were always associated with indie hip hop, yeah. but they were definitely not indie. Like they were a global name. It's so weird. Yeah. So well, but I think it was the authenticity. Well, do you remember how, um, there's that intersection real quick. I mean, it didn't really take off too much, but like the whole Quentin intersection and the and then the yep. kung fu thing, which was authentic yep. to them. You know what I mean? But that was pretty yep. wild too. The 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 it's fact good. that they had captured like a kind of moment, yeah. culturally speaking, um, considering mm -hmm. like what they were, Staten Island. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like an intersection on a graph. I don't know. They're just, they're crazy. They just, I don't know. I was in the mix. I was just listening to the mix on 36 Chambers. And like, it's weird because that's not even like a heavy album. Like it bumps a little bit, but like the mix is so like, I don't know. I Yeah, it's heavy though. And and I think kind of like it, what Super is saying about that punk analog. It's heavy. No, yes, exactly. Like it's yeah. not like, mm -hmm. there's a world of difference between like, I don't know what's a really like there's a world of difference between like bad brains and mashuga. Yeah. But, like both are heavy. Like yeah. both are heavy. Mm -hmm. While you can have some like drop heavy stuff. Yeah. But, like I'm still like it still goes just as hard, you know. Anyway, that's it. I just I was like, man, gosh darn That's a good one. Oh good. Yeah, These that's no, it's, oh, good. That's a good one. it's good. Wait, real quick, do yeah. you guys have a favorite out of the out of the nine or eight, I guess now? Do you have a favorite rapper? Mine's Method Man. I think Method Man or ODB. Probably love, ODB. ODB. Yeah. His style is yeah. so off the wall. Like, yeah. I just, again, one of, the, one of those things that it wouldn't work many other places, but for some reason it mm -hmm. works so well in Wu-Tang. Just a, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. He's crazy. I don't know. I'm a Jizza guy, man. Jizza is, Jizza yeah. is, he is really, yeah. really he's just, he's just, the thing about Jizza is he's, He, I mean, just looking at it technically. Well, like the genius. Tech, That's they call him the genius. He's, like, <laughs> like, he's the heart. He's the heart of the group. Man, man. man. The heart. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is awesome too, though. I mean, but yeah. No, I yeah. Mean, and that's the thing is like i'm talking about i just keep talking about, i just keep smiling bigger and bigger i'm like oh man these guys and i did a thing where i a couple of years ago where i tried to listen to the pretty much their main albums their studio albums not the remixes not the whatever east piece because there's a million of those but they're like they stay pretty consistently good like it kind of starts mm -hmm. to get stale towards the sixth or seventh album or whatever but it's still pretty legit like i was like is it still wu-tang so anyway, <clears throat> all right. Well, and there's I mean, I, I to their to their authenticity. I mean, how many how many we could say individuals or groups, like maybe the only one that I could think would be able to pull it off would be Kanye, but like the the album that Screlly has that's like the one off album, uh the Wu Tang album that was like never made oh, copies of that the farmer bro Screlly mm -hmm. bought. Once yeah. Upon a time in Shaolin. Yeah. How, how many, like, how many people in hip hop could pull off something like that where people would be legitimately like, oh, yeah, total sure. piece of art? Like, I will buy it and it can only be played and listened to. Like, you can't ever have a copy of it. I'm, I'm thinking that probably the only other person in hip hop that would even attempt to pull something off like that is Kanye. But yeah. I think that he would get a lot of flack for it in a way that they didn't, it, for them, they did it and everybody was like, oh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's just what That's, yeah. That's what they do. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that goes along with this theory I have that like 
if you're kind of like real to yourself and you're true to yourself, like even like what's a um, known as like a um, what was like a typically like a known bad trait of someone, Mm. if that person is authentic, it becomes like endearing. You know, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is in that his whole career. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Well, yeah, yeah. Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson, Robert Downey Jr. I mean, that's the thing is just. I I don't think that's the theory. I think there's absolute truth to that. What you're saying. Well, I was for that particular instance, I was more talking about and I get where you're going, father. I was more talking about like something can be baptized like something like a bad trait in someone like say someone's flair to be like overly a little bit emotional and dramatic if they're like if they're being honest with christ there's this way that they can do it where it's actually like really like Mm. oh that's just who they are you know oh that's just you know Mm. like it becomes this like um I don't know. It becomes well, like, no. I mean, again, what's well, the model that, of a fool for Christ, right? That's yeah, the model well, of a fool for Christ well, in some ways. I would even say, I would even say that's not even the case because the fool for Christ, they will feign or, or take something on. I think ah, a more accurate okay. thing would be like Saint Paisios. You know, like right. I was about to bring it up too. again. It's like you know, I mean, Saint Paisios. You know, you listen to him. It's like you know, it's like, there's a bit of that old curmudgeon in him. You know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah, and it <laughs> for real. it totally worked. <laughs> It yeah, totally works, you know. So, yeah, yeah. agree. Uh, uh, I think that's yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Wu Tang being kind of true to who they are and kind of just gain so much kind of love. There's a marked difference between Kanye doing that and Wu Tang because there's oh oh yeah and, oh Wu Tang, you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, real last thing I want to say about Wu Tang, then we can move on. Is their Tiny Desk performance on NPR? They have like a real violin, yes. play, like a it's like and then a drummer and yeah. it's like. He do all all their boot and all their beats like acoustically. I was like, yeah. that is tight. That is really tight. So anyway, yeah. All right. So I think yeah, we were to talk about some stuff. I hope you guys remember what it was because I sure I know. do. All right, I do. Well, okay. So it's it's on the note of something. A lot of people feeling. And I'm even feeling it here, here. And it's interesting that, Father, that you mentioned this timeline of like six weeks. Mm-hmm. That the last that within the last six weeks, something feels markedly different. And one of the things that I've been noticing, or maybe this is a good jumping off point. There, I don't know. Have you guys seen? And maybe I could play the video. But there's this. Uh, you, do you know who Destiny is? This guy, he's like a, a this liberal kind of debating. He's been on all these things, man. He's super annoying, super annoying, like woke. He's a real like he was really into the COVID-19 stuff, but he's like got millions of followers, whatever. So he he's this he's one of these. He like he's like a woke apologist. That's the best way to put it. And he's super famous, right? Piers Morgan has had him on. Jordan Peterson had him on his channel. He's been on all kinds of things, right? There's this video that got circulated maybe about three to four weeks ago. And it was, it said a destiny schizo arc, but basically he did a stream. He's a streamer. And basically he did a stream where he was, did you see this? No, I think I shared it, right? I shared it. it. Yeah. You yes. shared it. I didn't know he was. I didn't know he was like well known though. Oh, he's oh, dude. He he's huge. I didn't know that. He's yeah. huge. Yeah, he's they they have him on all the channels and everything. Like he's just he's the apologist for for all of the things that 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 Wokism. the woke the Church of Woke is doing and all of that. Right. He, so he's an out and out atheist. You know, he's going to debate anybody who's got any religious bent. He's going to debate anybody who's a conservative. Um, he's just he he just toes the line to a ridiculous level, but the fact that, and this is something that this is something that you know obviously I had been talking about for a while, but I was like, when is it going to happen? When is it g- going to happen that a relatively mainstream person realizes? So basically, what happens in this this video is he realizes that he's been interacting with mostly AI. And that, that that AI is basically like trolling him in a way at hundreds of accounts mm-hmm. that this AI is. Ba- and he comes to the conclusion and not just like on Twitter with these fake accounts, but like literal 
creating personas and videos of of itself to give it a persona with a, a peer reviewed paper somehow appearing in like publishing like like doc pub or whatever like appearing published and everything so there's like this whole there's there's a whole reality i think what it's saying that is that there's like a whole reality where ai is now participating in the culture in this way that we're not even aware how big it is and like these ideas of like nudges like little nudges and rogan just had a guy on who was talking about google doing these nudges in their algorithms did you guys check this out with this guy mm -hmm. this doctor mm -hmm. oh it's worth it's worth a watch he's been studying it rogan had him on and he's talking about how they're basically doing like the equivalent of like a nielsen box in a way on 15,000 people's computers tracking their like google stuff go ahead can i ask a question i don't i you have may. known i have thank you i have known the way the term nielsen box is can you just break that yeah. down a little bit i don't i know oh, that yeah 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 nielsen because oh, I'm, I'm old oh no, shoot okay. i'm old i know nielsen I'm old. we don't we don't need to have we don't need to have nielsen boxes anymore so okay. a nielsen box a nielsen box was a box that they gave to like a sampling of american television viewers to put on their tv at home that would uh that would basically track what channel they were watching at any given time and then off of that sampling was how they made the nielsen ratings of uh, and they extrapolated how many people were watching any given show wow okay thank you now they don't need that because netflix just knows whoever's watching at any given time right but th so they basically put a tracker in a way people have agreed that like they could install their software on their Google on their computers at home and then whenever or work and whenever they're searching, it's tracking what Google is feeding back to them. And what they're realizing is that Google is actively like making these nudges that you couldn't see unless you had this broad sample that Google is like nudging people in certain directions based upon what they're searching for. And it's different for every people, every person. And it's even different based upon your own political bent. So like if you're of a certain political bent, it's trying to nudge you in a certain way. If you're of a certain religious bent, it's trying to nudge you in a certain way. And that came that coming. This is all within the last six weeks. So like Rogan talking to this guy, the thing with the destiny and then all of these other stories about AI. And I'm like, I think, and this guy even says it, like, I think that we have reached a critical mass of AR, AI participating, which AI being a demon or being demons. And that like demons are like actively participating in the online culture now. And that, yeah. and that, like the change that we're seeing in people, I think is that, Father. Well, I was dealing with them. Um, I'm sharing with you guys. It's like uh, been dealing pastorally with not so much, thanks be to God, uh, actual, but dealing with people who are struggling with th these low gives me assaulted thoughts in regards of suicide, right? Mm. And just just to be clear, I haven't spoken it out loud. This it isn't like uh, I'm like talking with someone and like you know I'm having it's not that at all. Um, and it's it's just been the last two really the last maybe forty eight hours, right? Mm. Well, interestingly enough. You know, I, I have like the Apple News thing, and sometimes I accidentally like swipe to it because like I'm trying to find something on my phone. And then there was this like, um, I just saw it on the Apple News thing, like some pageant girl or somebody who won something, she just committed suicide, whatever. So oh, wow. the, the reason why I found that fascinating was such a low, like, how do I say this? The, it's terrible anytime that happens, but it was just kind of odd to me that. That showed up in my. I don't even. I don't look. I don't even go to Apple News. It was. It was. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm, I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm swiping right to get to something, and I kind of overshoot it, whatever. And I'm like, oh, it just kind of caught my eye, and it was just mm -hmm. so random enough. I was like, that's kind of weird, but maybe like. And I even thought I said, 
okay, have I had a conversation with anybody? I haven't been talking with anyone, so like my phone's not picking it up. The first time I had said anything out loud was to you guys, you know, 10 minutes ago. And so I, I observed that today. And so the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm like, hmm, you know, um, Lo gives me like these these suggestive things. And I think I think it's even important to kind of break break something down because remember Cyprian was like, gosh, maybe two years ago, three years ago, you know, people were having a real hard time with calling the ai demon a demon do you remember they're not any were, they're not anymore but they they were do you remember they were that, having though? a very difficult time do you yep. remember that do you remember people were having yep. a real hard time with that yep. and of course it was always because they don't understand people don't people just don't understand what the demonic is but mm -hmm. that being said it's like really hard to not come to that conclusion now i think is what you're trying to say um, yes. Even if someone doesn't want to go there on the level of, you know, metaphysics, whatever, like really an actual demon, but well, what are demons, you know? What are they? Yeah. You know? And so it's just interesting to me because the the effect, um, the real kind of this fungus, this wave, this slowly encroaching, um, anxiety desperation nihilism that it's just you know it, it, it's 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 like spilling over the cup i guess yeah. is one way for me to explain yeah. it you know yeah. um it's it's and again i'm sharing with you guys you know um just comparing notes with a mentor um and just seeing yeah this it's, it's not just because i could say well i'm in the i'm in the middle of the inner city right um I'm in the middle of the inner city. My demographic of my flock tend to be people who would be really exposed to, who isn't exposed to social media, right? Who isn't exposed mm -hmm. to these things that make you exposed to broader movements of, you know, mm -hmm. thought and emotion, stimuli. Okay. But moving outside of my own little, you know, uh, piece of the, you know, piece of, piece of land, it's like, no, and, and again, what's the connective tissue? Well, everyone has a phone. Everyone's connected some way, somehow. I think that's been a part of this. But yeah, there's a, there's a definite um, over. There, there's a definite kind of like surge of something um, that those who are paying attention are seeing, mm -hmm. and it's beyond just the kind of rumors of war. We're not talking about rumors of war, and it's, and I, the no. political the political plays part in it. But I mean, tonight we don't know, still don't even have to talk about politics because it goes beyond. Father, I feel I feel like politics, right? Like, and it's interesting for all that the uh, the media wants to hype up politics being the divisive element. Like, it isn't in the way that it was. It's not politics that's doing this. There's something at a much more spiritual level. And I at, to to the end of like, you know, you saying people having a hard time calling the AI demonic based on the fact that they don't have an understanding of what the demonic is but like you saying that it just occurred to me that like what is an algorithmic suggestion like a search suggestion or even uh, more like the ones that's like if you like this you'll like this like a youtube mm -hmm. suggestion what is that except the logos me mm -hmm. like how is that not a direct analog of mm -hmm. a logos me because mm -hmm. you're engaged in your attention is in one place and then here is a nudge coming from external of you mm -hmm. motivated yeah. by not your best self-interest right. that is taking that is nudging your attention like this right right and how much more so when like each video is like only a, a minute long like that right. that to me is just it's like jarring how addictive that is and like granted i've had to Genu I've, I've genuinely i've not been on much social media but youtube shorts is when i got really wrapped up in dude that's that's genuine. what you know what i had to do dude you know what i did i you turned off i turned off my youtube history oh yeah that would be smart i just turn <laughs> turn off the ability dude i'm telling you it's going to change your entire experience
Oh, turn good. off. You cannot become addicted to YouTube if you go into the settings and you turn off your YouTube history. You will okay. actually realize how addicted you are when you do that because nothing shows up. You, you will not get suggested anything. Mm. I've seen that before. I've seen that before. You will, you will have like... no suggestions, dude. And I, I tell well, and that way it's like, you know, you might have some things that you subscribe to, whatever, but you'll start to notice like, oh, 99.9% of the content I consumed on this app was suggested by the algorithm. It had mm-hmm. nothing to do with what I actually asked it to show me. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, how tip. long how long has that been? The 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 cultural rudder. Like, I mean, that's the rudder. I mean, it really is gen like 15 so, years. I mean, that's you know, and then that that makes me it's like um that just makes you like wonder about like, well. So I don't know if I can express this in a way. So anyway, how long has it been manipulating us? Like how long has this been going on? You know, and I think at the end of the day. Well, Andrew, that depends on what you're saying, what, what you think it is. And I think that that goes back to the point, right? That it's like, if it is just an extension of the thing that's always been manipulating us, but now it just has a new tool to do it. Right. (laughs) Because for me, I mean, Sorry, but to, uh, to like when people say um, what started World War II, it's like, well, if you want to get technical, it's the fall mm. of the Mesopotamian Empire. Like, right. you know, if you want to go all the way back, then technically it's that. But anyway. But uh, I just, it, for me, it's really hard to see it not as a more um, intrusive um all-encompassing extension of like television you know it's it's yeah and i think the the kind of programming that you know pun intended the programming that is for the most part been and we've had this conversation a a bunch you know but it's um it's interesting because i've talked with some people who have caught on to it separate from our conversations about it but Mm. um like you know back in the 80s and that that shift you know, married with children, the Simpsons and things like that. Mm-hmm. And just seeing, I, I think if nothing else, what happens there is it becomes a, a marker, which is more explicit than other markers of the influence on culture and how mm. what people are, are being privy to, duh, I guess, you know, kind of changes and motivates them. But the, but the thing behind it is, well, why that? And that I think that's the thing that maybe <clears throat> people are starting to kind of question or wake up to is, well, why in the first place? Why were we force fed or why were we, you know, kind of um, the first taste is always free, you know, in regards of the, the bumbling dad and just all the things that have slowly unraveled mm-hmm. society and, and moved us towards, you know, towards what and to what end. And I think that that's these are the questions that maybe we'll start getting asked in the public square, right? Because like you're saying, the thing about AI being, you know, the thing about even demons, and it isn't just, it's it's interesting how it's becoming more and more, not mainstream, but it's, it's leaking out more. I mean, people are having conversations about it more often. I mean, so. Tucker Carlson, how much more mainstream does it get than Tucker Carlson? He's talking yeah. about it all the time. He is, he is. And so then the question is, again, will people start asking, you know, to what end and, and to what purpose? And I think that's an easy one to dodge because someone may say, well, we'll never know that. So I don't want to ask that. But I think it should be asked. You know, mm-hmm. I think we should. I think people should be asking, well, to what end? Why? You know, what are we really? What What is it looking to do? With well, it's people. death, right, Father? Like it's it's death. It's 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 the path of death, right? I think the like the didache hey, at the, the beginning, it just says yeah. there's two there's two paths: the path of life, the path of death. It seems very. It seems like the church has had this on lock for a very long time, <laughs> in very sim- in a very like simplified and elegant way. It's like, look, there's two paths: path to life, path to death. Yeah. Clearly, anytime, and I mean, Andrew, when you said, you know. A- 
we the word that will always come up whenever we start talking about the algorithm and then it's children AI is addiction. Like its purpose is to addict. Yeah. And there's no question that these algorithms are built to addict because their whole idea is how how long can I keep your eyeballs on the screen? Yeah. That's the job of the algorithm. That's what it's built to do. If that's not addiction, I don't know what is. And then it's like it almost doesn't matter. The thing about addiction is it almost doesn't matter what you're addicted to. No, like it doesn't. It doesn't yeah. matter whether you, whether you're addicted to heroin or gambling or porn or whatever the hell it is. That's it honestly, doesn't matter. Honestly, and maybe um maybe Father can correct me here. It's a conversation I've been meaning to have with him for a while, but whatever. Because I've really wondered because I work with addiction. <clears throat> I've really wondered to what to what like um can we really hold the people of today to the same standard? of what we have kind of thought maybe the way that AA views recovery, can we hold them to that same standard? I don't think so. Because I know in the Orthodox and Orthodox, which of course, of course, I mean, all of this under being on the umbrella that I believe God is one with his creation. Orthodoxy is everywhere. It trained, it's fillest all things. But in this particular area, as AA understands recovery, can we really hold, jimmy jojo or whoever who's trying to get off his methamphetamine addiction but is like vapes and is on like a psychotropic drug or two and is on his phone a lot can we really like maybe that's a baseline now you know what i mean is do we need to like maybe move up the baseline for as far as addicted behavior goes because even even men I know who try very hard to pursue Christ, um, still, I mean, I, myself included, YouTube, you know, YouTube shorts, mm-hmm. you know, staring at a phone, looking, diving into mm-hmm. whatever pop star, well, what's going on now, or mm-hmm. what was kind of the deal with them back in the day, like, what's maybe, even for beneficial, quote unquote, beneficial things, like, um, maybe kind of looking into a certain different way of viewing a historical event or something like that of, well, they didn't tell you this about this, but even then, like that's still engaging in this weird way with our little mini Ouija boards, you know, we're still like kind of engaging in it in this way of like conjuring information to intake and maybe a way that's not necessarily helpful. Cause well, I when does the medicine for... become a poison? Well, and to that effect, I ask people, right? it's when you, it's when you take too much, it's based yes. on dose. Yeah. That's well, it. That's it. It's just like as soon as you, as soon as you cross, there's a threshold that as soon as you cross it, like you can't say I started for beneficial purposes. It's like okay, yeah, that's well, like that's the, the heroin. That's 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 yeah, that's the opium addict, uh, the opiate yeah. addict's story. Oh yeah, yeah. Th- you know I broke my back and so I got I got on it and it relieved my. Classic. But then I was addicted. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, but you know it's the boxings. It's like that was mm-hmm. supposed to happen. People get off of heroin and people get addicted to the suboxone. That's kind of what I'm saying, though. Is there a way in which, like, and I don't want to fill anyone with dread just in case they're on suboxone in this. I'm saying I've actually come closer to the idea of, in my counseling, of suboxone maybe being a somewhat acceptable alternative sometimes. Because I just don't know how, especially if a person is not in in orthodoxy, I just don't know how they're getting to a place of peace. I just don't know. Well, you how just to said do it. That. You just said it though. Like without well, Christ, there's no way at this point at, in this so day and age, am, there's no way. So am I a person who is at least trying and I'm, I'm not, you know, whatever, whatever aside, at least trying to pursue Christ. Can Jimmy Jojo, who's just living in Springfield, Missouri. And well, there's actually, they have a parish, but wherever, whatever, <laughs> like, wherever not really close to a parish orthodoxy not even on their radar or really can that person be held like the same standard as a person i mean look everyone's accountable to their own everyone's accountable to the the measure and light in which they were given Mm. and that that's the thing you know everyone's given a measure of light and and what do you do with that light you know that's that's you know saint pablo like you can't choose what family you're born into, what what ethnicity, what 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 country, 
but you can choose, do you live as a Christian, right? And so that that measure of light, but but I think the thing that's interesting is like, I kind of want to go a couple different ways with this because conversation I've been having, I had a, I had a, a nice dinner with some, some priests, which I don't do often, um, the other night, and we were talking about, you know, pastoral stuff. And, you know, the, the thing that came out was just talking about how idle people are now. Mm. And I think this is really, I think this is very important, actually. I, I think it, if it's possible, if I can get there, I think this is important in the context that we're talking about because some of the assumption, some of the presuppositions in this portion about like, well, do we, what is the bar? What's the litmus now? Like, you know, what mm -hmm. do we need to lower the bar? I think part of the problem is, is that, um, you know, it's almost like the goalposts have moved in ways that I don't think people realize, which is kind of what you're saying, Andrew, to some degree. You know okay. what I mean? Sure. But I, I, I think it's real important you start thinking about this, like, people are incredibly idle now. And even though you have people, you know, in, in the West, you know, there's, there's this common thing about Americans versus Europeans. Have you heard about this? You know, where people will say, you know, Americans work to uh, live to work, whereas Europeans work to live, you know. You heard, and you see it in the culture, taking the siesta, you know, in Spain and just everyone like takes rest, you know, holiday, all those things, right? But I think that in the given of, you know, our our standards of work, right? Being, you know, people, certain people being workaholics and stuff. I think on the whole, people are still incredibly idle though. Definitely in comparison to, you know, just a few generations ago, people are incredibly idle. And I don't think that you can... I don't, I don't think that's a small, I don't think that's a small piece of this puzzle because, you know, idle hands are the devil's workshop, right? Idle's my, an idle mind is the devil's, you know, plaything. And I think the fact that people are so idle now, um, more than just kind of the need to like move the goalposts, I, I think even, you know, taking a step back and saying, well, you know, how are we living and how are we, how are we doing these things? Because one of the things that happens when someone becomes orthodox is that the assumption is, is, and again, the assumption is that that person is going to start taking on some ascetic endeavor, right? A prayer rule, fasting, you know, um, there's an expectation of, of moving outside of, you know, being idle. Um, there's an expectation of, you know, this is one of the big things. What's the difference between orthodoxy and other Christian traditions? Well, orthodoxy is 100% focused on the cleaning of the inside of the cup. So the, the litmus for us is thoughts. It's not good enough for you to have moral behavior, right? Where other traditions it is. It's not good enough to have moral behavior. It's, it's not good enough to have, you know, your kind of quote unquote dogmatic ducks in a row. If you don't have, if your inner life isn't on a, on a trajectory of of repentance and 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 engaging purification, then you're in trouble. And that's 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 the standard that Christ lays out, right? Dealing with the heart, right? So our tradition deals with the heart. But the interesting thing about that is, our tradition deals with the heart in a way that is just completely different from every other quote-unquote tr tr Christian tradition, and at the same time, completely, acknowledge, you know, 100% acknowledges that the dealing with the heart isn't something immaterial. It isn't something that is just relegated to the realm of emotions and feelings, which people will erroneously call spiritual, right? Because to be, to for us, spiritual means, you know, the, the, the culmination of the whole person, right? The, the body as well as the soul. And so if you want to deal with the inner, right, if you want to start cleaning the inner man, you have to do it. This is St. Isaac the Syrian. You have to do it through the externals. That's another thing about our tradition is the externals are not it. And if you rest just solely, if you stop short at just dealing with the externals, you, you're, you've missed the mark. 
But in order to clean the inside of the cup, so this is thoughts, this is logos me, this is all those things that we're talking about, um, addiction, right? Because the root of addiction isn't found in the physiological dependency. That sure. The physiological dependency is the symptom of the root, it's right? Symptom of, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. We Hopefully everyone kind of understands that, right? So, you know, in, in order to deal with that you have to actually clean the inside of the cup. You have to get to the heart of the matter, pun intended. Um, which, again, we would acknowledge, right, that there's an absolute need to deal with the material means or the material needs of that person at that point. But that isn't to say that it's the root. It's just to say that you have to treat the whole person, right? It isn't, it isn't just simply enough to tell someone to think a certain That's why it's, it's not psychology. Right. It's not like, hey, think a certain way, wishful thinking, this and that. There has to be actual actual action there. But I think all of those things being said, to get to your point, Andrew, <coughs> excuse me, I think that um, people's, the, the, the bar in, by which we judge people, I don't think it's necessarily um, changed. I just think that to some degree um, it's even more imperative now that we be aware of the temptation to lower the bar. Does it, that's essentially what I'm trying to say. I'm sure saying that there's a strong temptation to lower that bar. And I think that's part of the trap, you know, um, because that's the thing that's going to really knock out in the, in the wrong ways knock out some of those things that are still left or afforded to man for his salvation, i.e. Um, trying to develop tenacity. The idea of not perfection, but, but moving in progress. Like those are, those are things that are key to orthodoxy. And those are things that are, I think, key to motivate a human being is like, hey, you know, God isn't looking for your success. He's looking for your effort. He's looking for your faithfulness. He's looking for your willingness to struggle. Right. And but the thing is, that isn't communicated to people. Right. And so mm -hmm. when when that's when what is expected of them is lowered, this is where we know it doesn't work because look at what liberal. Well, look at what social, political yes. policies of a, of a more liberal bent have done. That is what they, oh, it's, it's, it's DEI. It is DEI. It is DEI. DEI and, is the lowering of the bar. That's that's precisely and, what it is. And 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 again, just a case study, right? Because again, I think one of my big things, right, is it's just always important to remember. If you want to know the truth of something, can you scale it up and can you scale it down? Right? Scalability, right? And so again, you just just take take the little small case study snippet of African-Americans, not Ghanaians, not Jamaicans, not Eritreans, African-Americans, you know, black Americans, right? Who are born here, raised here. And you look to see on a whole, not the exceptions, right? But on the whole, in regards of perceived culture, I'm, have, I'm being really precise here, right? On the whole of perceived culture, and you see how that, you know, kind of like, you know, the, the soft bigotry of low expectations, how that has really continued to foment nihilism and despair in these things, right? Yes. yes. It, the opposite. So in other words, the lowering of the bar hasn't helped Black America. It's made it worse. Oh, yeah, Father, the, the, gold, the golden age of Black America was post-slavery and before World War II. Yeah, reconstruction. Yeah, when it was basically when there was the most institutional racism, the the fewest yeah. opportunities given by the state and the establishment, and people had to do for themselves. You had like the in terms of land ownership, it was per per capita, it was higher than it is today among yeah. African Americans. Marriages in terms, mar oh, the, it was it there were. It was actually white people who were having children out of wedlock. Yeah. Black people, black marriages were staying together. Yeah. Like, and they were having children inside of marriage. Like, it, it, it flipped. It flipped after it was like, oh, well, 
these people can't do for themselves. And it's like, yo, Tulsa, Oklahoma? Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Black Wall Street? Mm-hmm. Harlem? Right. What are you talking about? Right. Like the height right. of, of black culture. It took no time right. because people were like, well, don't give me anything then. Let right. me earn it. Right. And, and just get out of my way. Just get out and, of my way and let me earn it. And that is the case study of, of you know, starting to see the, the power of the, the, the power of, of mankind. That in fact, and this is this is the story of the Christian, that we actually human beings, we excel, we thrive under pressure. Yeah. We excel, we thrive under adverse conditions. Yeah. And when you remove those adverse conditions, you know, it's the same thing. It's like um you why know everyone uh, does so great bright week. That's why suddenly everybody stays so like like regulated diet. Nobody gets upset stomachs from eating too much meat or candy. You know, I, you know that's why Bright Week is you know never is none of those issues ever come up because the adversities. I'm trying to lay on the sarcasm pretty thick to say. Yeah, that, I like, think people so, know that. So, yeah. so for people who don't know, Bright Week is just yeah. people have post Bosco blues and lose their minds. They totally yeah. go. They they self destruct during Bright Week when there's no more fasting. Yeah. But but I was going to say, you know, one of the things that's, um, you know, I've also realized I'm an old man now because I'm talking about my health a lot lately. Um, <laughs> this is the second old man turbo episode. But, um, you know, it's like with with my accident, with well, my injury and, you know, seven months, it's seven months in now, eight months in, whatever, seven months. And, you know, the thing that's kind of still holding me back is actually, you know, like all the atrophy to my my muscles, you know, that happened from from the months of being, you know, inoperative and stuff. But what's interesting is, is that, you know, my legs will start, my leg, my knee, my my quads will just start absolutely killing me. And the thing is, it's super counterintuitive, but the pain comes, it's because I haven't loaded it. Right. So I 100%. need to, I need to go when I, when I get the pain, I'm like, I got to go work out because the absence of that load is what's causing, it's what caused the atrophy of the muscles and then the subsequent discomfort that comes from it. And it's the same thing for the human person on, on, on just the, the more kind of like holistic scale. It's like, you don't do well without suffering. You don't do well without the kind of, load and the stress that's put upon the system and so this is part of the thing getting getting back to i think um you know the hellish reality of us being spoon-fed what we want in regards of like ai and if you understand that for many people their quotient of what they feed their soul is vast majority from the you know, the, the teat of, of AI and, and, and these things versus, you know, from, from the breast of the, of, you know, mother church, you know what I'm saying? And so the, what, what kind of nutrients are your soul is your soul getting? And I, I think people don't think in terms of this, like, for instance, like with prayer, like what is prayer, you know, and we can say a lot of things about prayer, you know, but one of the things, um, and I mentioned this before, but one of the things about prayer that I think is so crucial for people to understand is that prayer is nutrients for your soul. And that when you, when you don't pray, so those of us who are Orthodox and those of us who, who kind of have the experience, you know that when you don't pray, you start to feel it. And it isn't just kind of like, oh, yeah. oh, I'm out of the habit of something. It's like, no, you begin to feel it because your soul is, is thirsting and hungering and it's, it's being starved. It's, it's atrophying, you know, to stick with the analogy, it's atrophying and it needs yeah, weakness. Yeah. It needs the load for in order for it to be healthy. And so you look at the the um the opposite of that in what people feed themselves. Just just think about think about the human body that just lives off of MMs and you know whatever 
Big Macs, pizza, not. soda, all this stuff, right? I'd, think r- about I'd rather that. not think about that human body. Think about that. Like, really think about that human body. Think about what that human body is not capable of. And think mm-hmm. about what that human body feels like all the time. Many of us know that feeling, okay? Well, just juxtapose that, you know, or rather, you know, kind of overlay that over the soul. And what happens to the soul that's just feeding off of nothing but porn? Feeding off nothing but, you know, outrage via politics. Feeding off nothing but just... Think about... And so the fruit of that is, you know, yes, initially, like, egocentrism, moving into, you know, a kind of soft narcissism. But from that, past that, you start getting into despair, nihilism. And then you start to realize that people are creating... They're manifesting hell within themselves because the meaning. Father, Father, forgive me. That's the exact analog. I just want to. I I just want to interrupt for a second because you could have replaced that with with any drug, in terms of like at first it's like oh I'm a hero at -hmm. the beginning, and then into the addiction it's going to be complete despair and headed toward nihilism, right? But it does start with that first energizing uh, and heroic feeling. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm better because of this. Mm-hmm. This has made me, be- and then it's poison. Sorry, mm-hmm. I just, but I, no. I just, I wanted to say it because it's like they're all the same. That's what I was saying before. Like it's all the same that I've yeah. seen. Yeah, it is all the same, and I think the problem is, is when people struggle seeing that it is all the same mm-hmm. because so asceticism, right? It's just kind of one of those things where um, I just want to make a suggestion for people if they're interested. There's a great book. Uh, it's it's a must read to kind of get some of this is like Way the Sex by Tito Coleander. Anyways, um, but moving past the kind of self-congratulatory asceticism that a lot of people engage on where they want to be like in a measuring contest. I mean, I mean the type of asceticism where it's like, you kind of step back, and I know some people roll their eyes like, that's not asceticism, but just follow me on this. You know, learning to check yourself where it's like, ah, I've been drinking, you know, a couple glasses of wine every day here. <laughs> yeah. Not really. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or it's like, yeah, I've been drinking so much coffee. You know, I've been drinking coffee all day long. I'm, I'm feeling kind of fried a bit. You know, it's like, you're not beating your wife. You're not, you know what I mean? You're still in your moral, like, but you recognize that you're on the edge of what, for you, would start to feel like addiction. You, you, you start recognizing that I am so habituated to this thing that, that I'm looking to it to bring me some sort of solace inspiration Mm. yada 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 and so Mm. so this movement of being able and and i would say in this modern age this is where cynicism is absolutely necessary because you're not going to do some some sort of crazy feat you're not going to go up to the woods and be a hermit you you know the demons will kill you literally they'll kill you they will get you to walk off a cliff or hang yourself but what you can do is you can begin to see where, oh, I've just been feeding myself for the last two hours, three hours, four hours, just whatever junk comes across the screen. And I've been doing that for two weeks straight. And I feel Mm -hmm. like I feel terrible. And, you know, and, 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 and. And then you say to yourself, okay, like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put up a little check here. See, it, it doesn't seem like much, but it's it's this, it's the same concept where <clears throat> a really morbidly obese pe- person, you know, we don't need to put them necessarily in carnivore and get them working out, you know, three hours a day, seven days a week. Let's just get them to stop drinking soda and eat Subway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just, just do that first, and then you're going to have huge gains. Just just from there, and you're not going to have the the kind of burnout factor. And I think this is important because one of the things that was always around the, the, the conversation on AI was like, well, what am I supposed to do? 
well, how am I, you know, this is unreasonable. And if it is a demon, and if it is that, that's like, you know, <laughs> who can be saved, Lord, basically, right? Yeah. And, and I think I think this is key, is, is beginning to say, like, look, before we go any further in kind of like the, the in the um, more titillating aspects of conversation, I just want to put out there to season this conversation with this fact of we have to be aware of the tools that we do have within the church because we aren't, um, this isn't, I think Andrew's saying, like, we're not, this isn't a black pill thing in the sense that on the individual, society is done. Sorry. <laughs> You're not going to convince me otherwise. Yeah. Society's done. But on the individual level and on the, and on the level of, of the body of Christ where she is, you know, incarnated locally, the parish, you know, all these things, there is hope for us. But it, it takes us to really taking the tradition in a way that it's um, sober and mature. And it's looking at asceticism, not as a means of, you know, kind of one more addendum or one more flex, you know, in your kind of, you know, cadre of things that you do as a hobby, but really understanding, um, you know, it's kind of like come from California. We would have those um, air quality warnings. Remember those? And for some people, they didn't. They smog didn't really, check. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever check, they call it. Smog, smog alert. Smog, smog alert. alert. You know, like for a lot of people, they kind of like rolled their eyes about it. But, you know, I had really bad asthma growing up. And so it was something that I had to take seriously. I, You know, and so I did because I just didn't want to get sick like I would sometimes, you know. So I think it's one of those things where, you know, it's like we can tell people you know, from our YouTube channel station that we're talking on, hey, you know, these things are going to snag you. But no one's going to turn it off. And I'm not saying that they need to, per se, but I do think, you know, like you said, hey, what about your history? Um, turning off your history and looking to see what that does. But even even with this, and I'm saying, you know, fast days, you know, on a fast day, really start checking yourself. But just start building out in you these moments of, you know, discernment and action by which you can kind of get unplugged because I'll say one last thing and I'll shut up because the thing that's always behind all this is when you're just sitting there drinking, um, you know, you're nursing at, at the tea, you're not aware of when some, something, something poisonous is going to come in. You're just, you're not, yeah, you're, you're not watching. And so this is where a lot of things that can kind of come in and, people can start imbibing odd ideas and odd things that um, <laughs> may come through a trusted source, quote unquote. But the reality is, is like, it's not, it's not of Christ, you know? Um, the, the actions, you know, I used to think that it was, was weird and overkill. Like even a decade ago, there would be friends of mine, particularly on like the I'm talking people who were who are who are to this day like high achiever high, like high achiever engineers for instance mm -hmm. and there was a subset of them some of the more quirky ones who would be like oh um sorry I didn't get back to you but like my I will lock my phone they're like when I'm going to work I have a lockbox and I will lock my phone in the lockbox and I will take the key and I will put it in a different room. So I'll have the lockbox in a room. I'll have the key in a room and I'll be in a third room. Yeah. And I and I do that because but it was their own father. I think it goes to, to what you're talking about, about this vigilance mm -hmm. that like they had this own watchfulness on their own heart. Mm -hmm. And I used to think it was overkill. And I was like, ah, I'm still high achieving. But, you know. It's only it's only until you're not. And then you don't actually know how high achieving you are, because you know what? When I really need to work and if I just so happen to leave my phone in another room on the occasions when that happens, because I just haven't grabbed it and put it, I'm charging it and I haven't grabbed it and put it into my pocket and I go to work. Oh, surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. I'll be coding. I'll be like, wow, that was a highly I'll be I'll be like, oh, ready for lunch. Wow. I had the most productive. I had I did three days worth of work in the last four hours. And I'm like, oh, that's good. Let's go to lunch. Okay. Where's my phone? Oh, I left yeah. it in the other room. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, 
Oh, I I, oh, that's what it is. I am the, that, vi- that vigilance, you know. Yep. I am the guy to fall for, like, whatever this is, like placebo or whatever. But I swear, I feel it's just, it is what it is. Whoever can make fun of me can make fun of me. I don't care. I feel Wi Fi sometimes. I'm just saying, it's like, when it's off in the house, I'm like, I'm never saying it's like not like spidey sense where I like just get up and walk straight to the router and be like, I knew it was off. Cause, but like when I turn it back on, like I can almost feel it. And I've left my phone. I did this where I would leave my phone in a weird spot, like on a high up shelf. So I could check it if I needed to. I could hear it if it went off, but I'm not constantly reaching in my pocket to see if it was there. And I would feel less stressed with it not out of my pocket, which is like leads me to believe I'm like, well, we still don't really know what 5G is. And mm-hmm. how I know this is not like the vibrations that it's emitting is not causing anxiety. I don't know because Father says it's almost like, um, this is almost like independent of just like, a you know, touch or it's like in the air. And, you know, it's almost like an ozone. Um, I don't know, I like it to mustard gas i don't know you can kind of just like it's just this thing and sometimes people are just used to living in it and we don't realize how bad it is but all that to say i'm saying that how do i know this is not these little squares that everyone or rectangles that everyone cares in their pockets how do i know this is not literally physically attributing to the uh the anxiety people because i mean i've seen those videos i'm sure where they play certain notes at certain frequencies and water will like turn itself into like a double mm-hmm. helix like a thing of pouring water or, or like into a staircase or something we're like 70 percent water so at least i think we're like something like 70 percent water so how is to say that we're th- certain things aren't being manipulated in us well so. but i mean i don't even think we need to go that far right like we don't outside of anything scientific or whatever if are people addicted to their phones and it's like, well, unequivocally, yes. Let let somebody let somebody lose their phone and see how they behave. Yeah. yeah. Are they behaving like an addict who can't find his crack pipe? Yes, would, that's exactly what they're behaving like. <laughs> I would pass the gum jabar if I could put my hand in the box. If they took my phone and chuck it into a pit, I'd be like, <laughs> right, and it would get me like right there. But this, but I, I but I think that's like. We're feeling we're feeling something and something has. So we, people have been addicted to their phones, like the entire globe is addicted to this, but it's not actually the phone that you're addicted to. Right. right. It's what it's what's on the screen that you're addicted to. Well, and the, it's the like dopamine, right? It's like that's that's ultimately I because mean, it can be whatever. I, I guess it's it's attention. Yeah, but I mean, it's both and, right? But like, it's, yeah. the, it's the dopamine because that's the contributing factor to addiction is dopamine and your dopamine reward system, be, reward system becoming jacked. And so mm-hmm. actually behavior at one point, which would have given you dopamine, such as watching your children eat a big yummy meal, knowing that they all got warm food in their tummy or fixing your wife's car or whatever, mm-hmm. that becomes inverted to the point where now instead of you know, the dopamine encouraging good behaviors, your dopamine now encourages bad behaviors. That's like when the flip happens into addiction because now you're actually being rewarded for pursuing behavior that is, uh, it's actually in, it's in the wrong direction for survival. Like no one ever benefited from watching six hours of TikTok. It's like, like, no. like that doesn't bring your body anything. So, but I would, but but I would like, I would argue that, I mean, I think, you know, having been around like fitness people and whatnot, there can be certainly active, like people can be addicted to uh, working out in a way that destroys them as bad. And they usually will end up taking substances and all of these things, but it can, it can destroy that. I mean, there's so much suicide among uh, you know, like bodybuilder type. I mean, professional wrestlers are a prime example, right? So it's like these are not inactive people. However, there's something, I, I think there's something naturally that's an amplifier for addiction when you have um, like sedentary, passive, like mm-hmm. your body is at rest. Yeah. 
yeah. and you can get into a hypnotic state. Yeah. Like, because that's what really gambling addiction is really about. Yeah. Is like this hypnotic state that gamblers enter into where they're just like sort of rote doing the thing and their mind is just like going and they know the patterns. And that, but it's the same thing with the, with, with drinking or drug addiction or a, any con, any type of content addiction. You know what I mean? Those, I, I think that there's something particular there, but I think what's so different about this is that it's the it's the interplay and the personalization because as of yet there's no drug or no gambling game that is personalized like mm. where it is specific to like your particular bent of what exactly like you imagine if there was a uh, like some they would say oh some people are susceptible to alcoholism and some people aren't okay but imagine that there was a machine that could serve you, that it knew you and your taste buds and your palate so well, that it could serve you every time the alcoholic drink that would taste the absolute best to you in that moment, every single person would be an alcoholic. Every yeah. single person. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think I'm, I'm shifting on something just real quick because I, the thing that strikes me about addiction, especially how it plays out with the um, kind of interaction, the interplay with um, you know our phones and things like this, is that it, it has this you know got to go there. Forgive me, but it has this. Um, it does have a very antichrist core to it too, because. The thing about a, the thing about dopamine is that it functions off of the chase, and so what you're it's this interplay, this complementary interplay between I see where you're chase and reward, right? Um, and the thing that's interesting is that that interplay is woven with deep within us, but it's meant to be and can only really be satisfied in communion with God in prayer because in communion with God in prayer there's there is this chasing of God there's this chasing um and this you know it's not just a, it's not just a simple longing because the longing is what puts you in, into movement right and so the very process of prayer some of the kind of mechanics of prayer is the searching uh, the searching the searching for God and that is what keeps someone, I mean, that's why people become monastics. That's why people at least should become priests. People don't become priests for those reasons, unfortunately, but that's why they should become priests, is that this longing, you know, for God, and and, and they begin, you know, um, if you want to use the term, we'll use it loosely here just to kind of play with, you know, making analogy, but they, they become addicted to that proper process of the chasing the seeking, the finding, the knocking and the opening and the satisfaction that comes because it's the thing about grace, you know, the seeking of grace and then the the, the acquiring of grace is, you know, um, in regards to, I don't know what the right word would be, not statistically, but uh, it, um, in relation to the seeking of grace versus the acquiring of grace is like, you know, you get grace, you know, once for every, you know, nine times of like, you know, seeking prayer, whatever. You, you see what I'm saying? But but you do that because of because the reward for it is so is so high, right? And there's a weird inversion that happens, and that's why you see people's prayer and you see these things. Prayer is one of the first thing that takes a that takes a dive with this addiction, right? Long yeah. before long before anything drops off in the life of a believer, their prayer tanks tanks. Yeah with this with this type of addiction because it 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 gives that false sense of 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 satiety you know it's like the person eating twinkies and it's just like i just ate a bunch of twinkies but i feel like crap and since i feel like crap i'm not really going to eat anything else so it's this very it's this you know, this is the same maximus the confessor the pain pleasure cycle but you know this person spending all this time and it's like who really wants to pray after you just did a binge on your phone? You don't want to pray. 
Oh my gosh, it's, no. It's it's taking everything because because that cycle of chasing and and, and seeking, again knocking, um, and having it open. And so you've already done it in in a in a fast food anti Christ way in place wow. though, rubber in place. Is that is yeah. Father, wow. I mean, because even if you think about the the terms that we use, I went down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Well, yeah. what's what is that from? It's yeah. Alice chasing the white yeah. rabbit down the rabbit hole. That's yeah. what yeah. we're talking about from Alice in Wonderland right. Right. and yeah. chasing the dragon. Yeah. Right. So like addiction right. as chase. I guess right. I had never heard it articulated that way, but of course it is. Yeah. There's. Of course yeah. that's what. That's it what it is, and that's, that's why fun. it. I'm sorry, Andrew. Go ahead. Uh, that's the fun. I mean, that's the thing. Is like I remember during my addiction days if there was worry of not being able to obtain the thing that night the palpable like let's say i'm hanging out with a group of six people and we're all broke and then we're all kind of sitting there and it's going to be like seven o'clock and we're like oh no one's got any money like what are we going to do and someone like shows up with a case of beer or whatever the palpable relief the like the feeling of like surge of like palpable like okay it's here and that whole that cycle of even like i guess in this case it's not even chase but of like i don't know of like risk reward of like rolling the bones about like what are we going to do how are we going to be able to do this like how can we do this again how can we get wasted for six bucks or whatever then like that whole thing becomes part of the ritual and it's the ritual i mean it's the from the moment you touch the thing or the idea there's a guy i know not to be lewd this is the last thing i'll say but he there's a certain drug that when you and happen to invite cocaine, it tends to mm -hmm. move the bowels. And this yes. guy, he had a ringtone that I knew he had a ringtone for his dealer. And whenever his dealer would call, it would automatically have a response. You had to go to the bathroom like every and every time. And it's become so ingrained wow. in that culture that that ritual becomes so ingrained. It was now affecting his body to the point where he would go the, take the it's interesting that what you to go back to when you were talking about like oh how are, how are we going to get this and then the feeling that you got when you did manage to get it yeah. it's so interesting because the term that we use for that is score mm -hmm. i scored mm -hmm. and it's the same feeling that you would feel when scoring a goal yeah and it's the and it's the chase again because the whole thing about what you're at the goal like we literally call it a goal. I'm chasing mm -hmm. after the goal. That is my goal. And when I've caught it, yeah. I score. Right. I've scored. And but but you begin to see. Wow, that's so you, crazy you, that we're we play this out like that. Whoa, you, you, it's kind of gross. You you begin to see though how this kind of begins to um over, you know, kind of like um I don't know the word would be again, it scales up, but um, I'm talking about now, you know, because there's this whole thing with addiction and, and and really more importantly, like sobriety and how someone will be dry but not sober, right? And so you'll see people who they're not partaking of any substances, any or any explicit substances. You know, they're probably still on caffeine or whatever, but they have those same character flaws and personality distortions. Um, that are the hallmark of, of an addict. You know what yeah. I mean? They they lose their mind when they don't get what they perceive to be, you know, that that score. They lose their mind when, um, and really when they're faced with the, um, when they're faced with the challenge of, you know, it, it's time to kind of work out that heart muscle, right? When they're faced with that, they just, they do everything to deflect. They do everything to escape that. So they'll usually defer to, you know, poor behavior, narcissistic tendencies, things like that. But that's only because now that external mechanism of the drug, whatever that is, is removed. And all that they're left with is this, is this kind of inward movement, right? But I think this is really important because for a lot of people, um, you know, they, they'll go years still living and operating as quote-unquote addicts, even though they're not 
drinking or, 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 or actively yeah, using, you know, because this thing that we're talking about, they never uncover it. They never really, they never really um, deal with it. And it's never, it's, it's never brought to the light in such a way that the process of healing can begin. It's always, you know, it's covered up now with, with something else. It's, right. And, yeah. It's reframed. Oftentimes I see that the device that's being used to help, um, to help a person. Okay. Do you guys remember the movie fight club? Do you remember the part? Uh, where he, yes. Yeah. 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 But he kisses the hand and then pours the lie on it or whatever. Oh yeah. And, and then he's like, no, don't go to your happy place. Like stay here right. with the, with right. the, with the pain here and now. Right. Kind of go back to the Gom Jabbar. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm not model, you know, I'm not the model for this. This is something that I wholeheartedly believe in, but I still absolutely fall into traps of zoning out, of of faking out or whatever to get through a particularly difficult trial. But you know, as as often as I can and as Did often we talk as- about disassociation last week. Did we? Seems likely. The whole the I don't remember. I feel be. like I, was, I know, don't listen to the episodes well, afterwards. So maybe I checked out. Maybe I disassociated. Yeah, because I, mean, I, was, <laughs> well, well, I was saying how like um I felt like we were talking about it, or I mean maybe I was talking about it last week, but you know, people back in the day didn't dis- disassociate. That's a modern phenomenon. Right. Yeah, sure. sure. Well, you couldn't afford to. No. Well, you could you couldn't yeah, afford you couldn't to. afford to, and but see again, this is this is this is the kind of other side of, of what we first started talking about in regards of like the bar. What is the bar? But I think I think maybe to give a rebuttal to what I was saying earlier about let's not move the bar, right? You know, this thing about disassociating, like people dis dis you know disassociating as a as a um a psychological psychiatric phenomenon now. It's a, it's, a, it's a total phenomena as the fruit of modernity and nihilism like yeah you know what i mean it, that that getting you know going deeper in what you're saying from that part from uh fight club like the kind of checking out and you know going to that happy place but see it it begins to now get to this place where it's just even the slightest bit of challenge but that's that's kind of what i was talking about and f- forgive me i don't want i'm not I think maybe I didn't phrase my question correctly. And I know that that can be a sign of like not being a very good spiritual son. Cause I asked a question and then you're like, give me an answer. I'm like, well, I don't think I'm asking this right. But I do think that like maybe a little bit of the nuance of what I was trying to convey, like just the, just as a random example, I work in Kansas and I drive over there in the, um, What's the cognitive di- cognitive um, dissonance? Dissonance that takes place when I see a place like Hobby Lobby. It d- just that kind of insanity that like ramping up of like a high string violin, just like looking in that building and knowing there's f- like 500 other buildings in 500 other areas of America that all look exactly like this one building is so intense and so visceral the human mind has not been able to adapt to <laughs> seeing that that the fact that like there is a Taco Bell can like Taco Bell KFC hybrid restaurant where you can both go order Taco Bell and We KFC. even have one here. We even have one here. You know it's funny saying- that's the first restaurant I saw in Iraq. <laughs> oh, really? Taco Bell KFC hybrid. Yeah. That's that's a, isn't there I a mean, song about the KFC Taco Bell? Like, I'm isn't sure that a, there isn't is. there some sort of parody song about it? <laughs> but the cognitive dissonance, the insanity that us who are and don't get me wrong, I don't hate all of Western culture. There's huge chunks of Western culture I have a deep appreciation for. But just the the night the Tim Burton esque like nightmare of the suburbs. And I'm not talking about like the suburbs of like some cool town. I'm like talking about like your your Chick Fil A's, your your like anthropologies, your Best Buys. Like I didn't even know Best Buy was still around for a long time, and then I saw it. 
the cognitive dissonance, the like high pitched string notes that's playing in the every person who's just wanting to like fall down and rip their hair out at all times. The fact that like they have to go to this other's just the inane qualities, just the totally boring prefabricated lack of spirit that goes into anything resembling our modern culture. Well, the demons are banal. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but like the insanity, the the and I don't like using this term, but the the gaslighting that takes place that this is supposed to be normal, that this is supposed to be the way so I can go from the target on the west side because they didn't have the things they needed to the target on the east side and go and see two pretty much the same. I'm going to go try another target. I'm going to go try the other target. I'm going to go try <laughs> like this. This is what I'm saying. This is the best case I can come up for of why we should lower the bar. The insanity, just the mere like ramping up the dry gears grinding be behind like the people who are driving Lexus SUVs and drinking Starbucks while going to the Starbucks uh, or the Taco Bell, I'm sorry, the Target across town. It's just insane. It, but see, what's it, let me let me grab a let me grab a latte at Starbucks for this drive over to but, the other Target while I go check the exactly. other Target <laughs> from the let Starbucks me, me, inside the Target. Yeah, like, let me throw this out though because thing. I'm thinking about the Canadian guy uh, in regards of like oh, this is also vague, you know. But like, I think this is <laughs> much stamps. respect. Much respect, a. Um, oh this is, yeah! Now I got yeah. what you're trying to say. Okay, yeah. yeah, sure. This is this is where I think the thread of you know we were talking about asceticism and where you know um, not you know it wasn't like premeditated but like just kind of being self aware of like hey you know want to kind of throw out some like affirmative movements of some things to that I guess you know just it, it's playing out that way but this is why. Um, orthodoxy is the truth and this is also why there's two churches there's there's an orthodoxy now which is you know developed ha has been developing is developed in such a way that it it seeks to not only um embrace but really um you know champion the movements of the world and and Orthodoxy is fundamentally otherworldly. And so everything that you're talking about, this kind of like uncanny valley inane movement that most of us find ourselves in because of the lack of suffering that like we're talking about, right? The lack of stress on the system in the, in the right ways, right? I think it's like lobster guys coming into play here, but like Definitely. all of these... You know, it's a hey, broken clock is right twice in a day, timestamp. But I, I I think the thing is, is this is where you begin to start really seeing like, okay, like this is, so the, this is like your takeaway maybe, I don't know, but this is where you start understanding what's my litmus and what's my gauge for the tradition and orthodoxy and like, okay, let's say you got on the train, right? And who knows how you got into orthodoxy, who knows what stream, the algorithm spoke to you and like that's how you got hooked okay great but like where you land and how you live this out matters because one thing's that you know we're always in a kind of in our little piece of the sandbox in regards of being perceived as you know fanatics um you know we're all going to become old believers soon here in regards yeah. of you know next year when they <laughs> you know essentially when because again everyone's familiar with the the universalist statements by the Pope that just came out. We already knew. We already knew that that's what he believed. Um, and we already knew that that's where they were moving the, the Latin church. But now it's like official, formal and everything. And, yeah. and so when you see that there's, there's lots of people who are quote unquote orthodox who go like, what's the problem, right? Why is all this matters? Is this just some weird red herring that I'm talking about? No, to me, all this matters because you're not going to discern any of these things that we, you're not going to discern any of that stuff. You're not going to care about what's coming down the pike in the next couple of years. In fact, you may be one of those people who's like, we'll jump ship where it's like, yeah, the, these people are a bit, a bit crazy. It's like, who cares? You know? Um, 
who cares about the calendar? Who cares about, you know, like, yeah, I guess if you look at the right way, all roads look, lead to God. See, all of these things, you swallow in all those impurities because you weren't being watchful in the small things. Mm -hmm. Like, see, this is, to me, this is where all this matters. And this is why it has to be the center of your life. It has to be your lifestyle. It has to be your paradigm. It has to be your worldview you know, to be able to to really be conscious of these things. And to some degree, you know, I hate to say it's going to make some people get, get you know, a dumb chill. But that old saying of being in the world but not of the world is, is very valid in this case. Because, yeah. you know, looking and seeing how just kind of absurd everything is, you know, there's this, there's this guy... I mean, it is what it is. I don't want to get too too much into it because, to be honest, I didn't listen to the whole podcast. But you know, this guy he did this recent talk. He was trying to talk about the kind of um, counterculture punk um, connection to orthodoxy, but then he was framing it in regards of like, why is it always like these conspiracy theorists and stuff, right? Okay. But but the thing is, is I would submit, well, no, no, this, it's always, it's always been this, like the church has always that, that truth or the church has always been this countercultural, you know, out of step with the world. It has to be, because if it's not, it's not the church. And so when you see any movements, religious, especially otherwise, that, that are looking to really um, make an apology for the world and for some of these things that some people are like, I can imagine some people maybe didn't get this far and they're writing comments of like, come on, really, bro? Like Target, like, you know, you need to chill out, blah, blah, blah. But if you get to this point, you may be like, hold on to your comment because, yeah, we all got to go to Target. Just like the early Christians had to go and they had to walk past the Hippodrome and all that stuff. But it's it's being in the world but not of the world. And I think it's all the more important now because the level of – the level of poison in which we're all taking in, getting back to the earlier prior conversation about prayer and the opposite of prayer and just what is, you know, you open yourself up to receive when you're in prayer, you know? And the inverse of that is you open yourself up to receive when you get into the vegetative state, which is a faux prayer-like state when you're just like doom scrolling. See, people don't make this, they don't make these connections because if they did, I think people would be a lot, not completely, but they'd be a lot less um, passive and engaging this way. If they understood that it really is undermining their, their, the fundamental purpose of their being, which is to know God, to chase yeah. after God, to seek God. Yeah. And in order to really do that, you can't just kind of do that on Sundays. You have to actually have it be part of your how your your culture, your life, right? You have to raise your kids this way. And you have to have friends who have the same type of view, maybe not exactly, but you have to kind of begin to build an arc on a on a low on a lower level because if you don't, it just becomes too easy to get sucked out. No, and no. anyways. No, you're wait, I, I want to say I want to say something about the the target before I forget. Because this just it's crazy that we're specific that Andrew specifically brought up Target and that and this this conversation about like, no, nah, don't don't think that Target's something small. Like if you if you think that you you don't have the perspective of outside, because I will tell you two weekends ago, and I know exactly what it was because it was after my daughter's cross country meet on a Saturday, two Saturdays ago, stopping off to get them my, my daughter's a treat after their cross country meet and my daughter apropos of nothing i think she's i think she was in a conversation with um my my nine-year-old was in a conversation with the five-year-old about um the united states about the mainland united states right because they haven't the 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 youngest one has never been to the mainland united states and the the older one hasn't been there since she was four so she doesn't really remember much they're talking about the mainland United States. And my nine-year-old said to me, eight-year-old, my eight-year-old said to me, I, no, she's nine. No, she's eight. She'll be nine. 
She said, when I go to when I go to the mainland, this is what she said. I want to go to a Target. <laughs> That's what she said. She Can said, I, I want to go to a Target. I said, I said, why do you want to why do you want to go to Target? She said, because I think Target is just so cool. I think it's so, so cool. May I make an observation or go may ahead. I express an observation I've made? And boy, yes. I'm just prepared. It's just going to happen. It's fine. It's whatever. You guys can say whatever you need to say. Clickety clacky. I understand. Almost 90, I would say 99% of the women that I know and no, love, Target. love women. They love Target. No, 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 no. It is a complicated relationship with Target. <laughs> it is. It, it transcends love. It is the right. kind of, it is the kind of relationship they have with a toxic best friend yeah. that they have known yeah. since first grade. And like they mm-hmm. kind of always quarrel, but most of the time they get along. And like this toxic friend is, I don't know, like just every time you talk to her, it's some kind of new thing or something like that in some weird mm-hmm. way. And it kind of went through a couple of weird you know, things. But you know what that is? You know what that is? It's addiction. No, I know. And it's in they're addicted to Target. So I have observed this in several people to the point where I I'm dense and I have seen it where I'm like, it's never just love. It's always like it's Target. It's like, man, you know, you could just ask Jane, whatever, off the street or whatever, this made up person and say, like, it's not just like, oh, I really like Target It's always like. I don't know what it is. It's like they have good deals. And it's so like interesting being there because like the whole time I'm like, well, what am I doing here? It's more expensive than Walmart, you know, and it's still kind of like the same quality. I don't know. I've just seen it enough times where I'm like, this is an observable phenomenon for me. I mean, hey, but what 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 happens if you're in a, a competition and you hit the bullseye or you're playing darts and you hit the you, you throw it at the target, you score. That's how you score. You score you a bullseye. Score. <laughs> you yeah. score a bullseye. I'm telling you, we're playing these things out because I asked my daughter, I was like, what do you know about Target? Because when she said that, I was like, Ugh, Target. Like that was my first response, like of all the things you want. And she said, no, because my several of my friends have been to the mainland and they all said that Target is awesome and that I must go to Target. And I'm like, look, People out there, I'm telling you right now, that like it used to be, I'm telling you from the outside. Are you taking a fiercely anti-target stance? Because we're going to lose the demographic we have. No, no, this is not an anti-target stance. This is not an anti-target stance. (laughs) But what I'm telling you is that, you know, it used to be when people would talk about American culture and what they wanted, people who had never experienced it, right? They would be like rock and roll, blue jeans, hamburgers Mm -hmm. 4th of july fireworks now it's target people think about that that's what your culture is regardless you want to you want to talk about oh we need to western protect western culture that's what what that's what from the outside that's that's what people think the best thing that you have they think it's target guys that's interesting they think it's Target. She doesn't want. She doesn't. There's. A, she doesn't know anything else about them. There's nothing else in the mainland she wants to see. She's been to Disneyland. You know. She's been to Tokyo that, Disneyland. That's way better than the than than Disneyland in Anaheim. That's interesting. She that's there's interesting. Target. Actually, Target is what Target is what the youth of the world who have a chance to go to the mainland U.S. think is the best thing that the mainland U.S. has to offer. Wait, folks. I'm telling you that. right now. <laughs> Dude, there's a father. She's father. She's never told me. She's no, never I'm, told me that she wanted to go anywhere in the anywhere in the states, wow. except Target. That she told me two two Saturdays ago. She's never brought up such a thing. There's actually a sketch. I don't remember what his name is, but he's like a famous comedian that talks all about like living in the Midwest. He does like a lot of those things, and he actually has this whole sketch about husbands of wives who went into Target, and they're all just like hanging out in the parking I've lot, they have, like little mini football games, and like. Like they're like roasting, and like one guy's like, "Yeah, man, I started pushing carts just for something to do." They gave me a part time <laughs> job. Like, last last week, I clocked like fifteen hours or something, <laughs> and they were just men just waiting for their wives in Target. And so, but, I mean, but look, I mean, the tail, that, that's that's it. That's the pattern. Like I, this guy is seeing that pattern. 
No, I know. And it's, it's a thing. I think if you talk to many men and I would say I'm only comfortable with speaking about men, I guess, in the Midwest, I think that they would probably say like, Oh yeah, my wife goes to target. I don't know if they're paying attention or maybe this is just me. I'm not saying that my wife is even that odd about it. It's just kind of the same thing I've seen in a lot of women. It's just kind of like, Oh, target. Don't get me started. You know, it's, I, and so I, I just want to say this. I'm, I'm not trying to be like, quote unquote, misogynistic. I'm sure there's an equivalent on the men's side. I'm sure there's some weird thing. No, I mean, come on. You know, there is Cyprian. Like, you know, it's it's something stupid. <laughs> He's like, like, no. I mean, I don't know what it is. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's something. But um, maybe it's like. Oh, I don't know. I can't think of I can't think of it. So. Well, because uh, and this is the reason why I say it, it would be the thing that I would. So I would know the thing because it would be the thing that I would miss. You know what I would honestly say? You know what I think it is? What is it? I think it's honestly strip clubs. I think it's I it just bear with me. It probably is. Saying, I think you're I, I complicated think you're right. Relationship. It's I, expressed I think you're right. Differently through men. I think you're right. No, now, you're right. I don't think it's a no, one you're right. for one. I don't think it's a one for one. But I think if we're looking at maybe some of this complicated relationships, maybe some of the things that draw a person in, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. It, I think it would be a place that would have to be complicated. It can't just be That's, like. But how? But how crazy is that? Like from a spiritual standpoint, that we're like the relationship that women have with Target oh, oh, is basically the relationship that men know. have with strip clubs. I feel like the stretch. I don't know. No, <laughs> hear me out. What is Target selling? What is Target? Okay, I'm gonna speak very broadly. I would say like Home Depot before a strip. No, 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 no. No. Nothing to say that for Bass Pro Shop. No, Home Depot is a place you go to get work done. No one is yeah. necessarily going to Target to get work done. Uh -huh. They might be picking out yeah. outfits. They might be buying some practical yeah. things. But more than anything, it's this is it's scratching an itch. It's, it's scratching, scratching an itch. What is Target selling you? Target is selling you an upscale, quote unquote. Because you're not shopping at Walmart, but a slightly upscale yeah. dream of security and of um, status, mm -hmm. of status. Because yeah, it's you like you go to Wal you go to Walmart to buy things. Women go to Target to shop. There's a difference. Uh -huh. That's a good distinction. Yeah, that's there true. It is. That's so true. So if we want to take those feelings and put them, not it's not the same avenues. But again, men are being sold a fantasy. It's a fantasy of what could be of like your potential because like look there's this really attractive Andrew, woman. I honest I honestly think you're right, dude. I I'm, I'm not I don't arguing, know if I'm, I'm right. not going to argue with you about that. I'm not going to argue with, as someone who has had a complicated relationship with strip clubs in the past. You know what I mean? And who by the way, funny that you bring that up, Andrew, because I was just giving thanks the other day that God chose to put me in a place that does not have strip clubs. There you um, go. Or targets. Because, be, because I was like, you know how much harder my life of orthodoxy would be, Lord, had you yeah. given me that temptation, which had been a temptation my whole life. Horrible sure. temptation my whole life. Mm -hmm. It's like of all the, and, and at one time there were strip clubs here, mm -hmm. but they shut down. And I was like, you know what? Perfect. That probably would be really Perfect. weird. You need that to operate in like a big city because you can't run into mm -hmm. that, the the dancer outside. And I'm sure that that would happen, like running into the person like at the Walgreens oh. or whatever. That would be <laughs> like, there'd be no semblance of Absolutely. A, a large part of that port, a large part of that fantasy would be taken away. This is some <laughs> nameless girl that exists as soon as she comes on the stage. And as soon as she leaves, she doesn't exist anymore. That's the fantasy. Mm -hmm. And to see them out, then it actually brings, well, this is actually someone's daughter. This is actually someone's mother, probably. This is someone's sister. That illusion is ripped away. Fantasy's ripped away. So it's like, it almost, you almost need like a certain like population size in order to put a strip club in and make it successful. Like, well, I think this is also, this is also part of the addiction, right? And people are certainly addicted to strip clubs. I've well, yeah. known guys in Vegas who were addicted to going to the strip club. I mean, 100%. no question about they couldn't live without it, right? The the it is it, it is interesting that that the again it's like the passive state 
Although there is a little bit of like walking, but that's part of like the shopping thing for for women, you know, but like the being able to get into a hypnotic state because Target will put you in a hypnotic state, dude. So it's built to put you into a hypnotic state. You know that we talked last week about (laughs) (laughs) this is a crazy conversation. But there's something to it. There's something you're not second questioning yourself, like your intuition, like don't. Yes. I'm I'm kind of starting to say, second question this intuition. <laughs> starting to kind of fall apart a little bit in my mind. I was so <laughs> clear for one second. I could be completely wrong. I don't really know. This is not a hill I'm willing to die on. Maybe oh, maybe I'm right. No, I think you're I think you're I think you're right, dude. I, it's, I also I want to speak in I think this is right generalities. Now. I'm not saying every woman I know is addicted to Target, just like every man I know. I have to walk by two strip clubs if I want to go downtown. In Kansas City, I have to walk by two. So I don't want to act like that this is not something that is not right here. And I don't want to be like, oh, well, well, women like shopping and men like strip clubs. I'm not even I'm saying if you had like a two different engines or something that ran differently and you plugged a battery into one, like a power source into one and it lit up a certain way, then you took it out and you plugged it into the other engine and it lit up the other way. I'm seeing that's that's kind of what you're seeing here is like that same stimuli, that same that father's just dying, <laughs> like that same stimuli, that same passion or whatever, the way that it's manifesting externally, it looks like this. And I'm, but, you know, the- I think, Andrew, I think there's something to be said for the fact that I think men used to have these things. I think a lot of this has been a part of the emasculation of sure. the American culture that like actually we try to think of what would be the male equivalent and we actually don't have them. And I think that that in some ways is what that comedian was trying to point out by like the fact that they were having a tailgate party because it used to be sports. Sure. It used to be men would go and they would do their thing and they would have a complicated relationship because especially if their team wasn't doing well. Sure. Right. I have. Oh, and I've heard it. So many times I've heard men say, oh, I've got a complicated man. I've got a complicated relationship with the Dodgers. You don't know, man. I have a complicated relationship with the Chiefs. I've heard that. Sure. Like I, I've got a complicated relationship with with uh, with the cow with the Dallas Cowboys. Complicated relationship, man. You know, but I think a lot of that it's been there's been a, a layer that's been put in front of it an abstraction. And I think men have men don't have those things anymore. Hey, that could be, you know, that could be. And I think that there's definitely like a whole other avenue we could go down there. But, you know, aside from that, we're at two hours. I think yep. at a certain point, like this is I think this is one of those. I think if you just say this one, last, I just say this one thing, we'll wrap it. But yeah, father, please. The one thing that I did that I did kind of like pull out from just observing whatever this was right here. <laughs> like I think there's more than one father. I think okay, well I'm just gonna say, but sure. if we're talking about generalizations and they're just, you know, bold italicized generalizations, lust and vainglory. And you know, men in regards of like particular men struggle with vainglory, women struggle with lust, obviously. But I think if we were to kind of like put a certain lens on it in regards of the way that the passions are kind of activated on a gender level, you know, because envy and vainglory for women, because I think that's part of that complicated aspect of the the complicated nature of that relationship you're talking about, because it's the, the, the vanity, which is kind of obvious, but the envy, which isn't so obvious, but it's definitely woven in there in regards of the relationship to shopping, let's say, or Target, whatever. Because even Target being, like, higher than, you know, higher grade than, let's like Walmart, let's say, but it's not um, it's not high-end as something else, whatever. So that's an interesting thing. But then, like, I, I don't know, just, I'm struggling with the strip club thing because I don't think that, I mean, um, it just it seems like such a different world. But the lust, though, the lust, the play between – the way that let's say at least the two genders are snared uniquely lust and envy or lust and vainglory. That's just a little observation. I think that's probably probably the through line that I unwittingly 
like stumbled on like let's be honest like tripped and fell into the pit if it were a snake it would have bit me is that i think that the through line is if what what passions in what places in each gender mm. need to be activated you know mm -hmm. so whereas lust might work for a man that's not going to give up the same things that like like father said like vainglory is kind of for a woman and yes women struggle with lust and men struggle with vainglory but there's a certain vibrational mm. part of a per of a of a person who's struggling in repentance about that thing. That's like it's to me. It kind of feels like um, it's like a viper almost. Like that yeah. guy, that kind of vibration of that is like it's different in women. In the same way with men, when you start to get kind of close to that thing, it's grosser in anyway. So, so anyway. I I really don't hold by anything I said tonight too strongly. I imagine I'll probably get flayed a little bit. Uh, we'll see. I mean, um, we'll see. So, uh, you know that there's a podcast I listened to one time where a guy said that he had uh, Tourette's. He has Tourette's, right? And he said that a blind guy that he knew, a blind friend of his, when he stood over his head, would smell ammonia. That's the smell that electricity makes when, or the smell that electricity, you know? So I was wondering when I'm around a schizophrenic person and a genuine schiz bona fide schizophrenic, and I get filled with a certain particular like worry and kind of like uneasiness. I wonder at some level if I'm smelling chemicals coming off from them because I'm like in this very, very like primal way deep inside me. So think about that anyway. So if you guys want to contact us, it's contact at royalpath.network. Um, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's what I'm starting doing. For now. Shower thoughts. Yeah, shower thoughts. Shower thoughts. From um, so uh, that's, <laughs> that's actually not bad. <laughs> you should have one of those. Now that we're at past episode 100, it's time to kick up the game a little bit. So, <laughs> oh, you're going to introduce a new character to the sitcom. Yeah, it'll, be some, it'll be some adopted adopted cousin who comes in, some little <laughs> toe headed boy who's, who's going like, to. Oh, what are the odds? Another unknown family member is visiting me on recording night. <laughs> Hold on, I'll go grab him. <laughs> <laughs> no that would be too much so if you want to contact us contact at royalpath.network if you want to reach out to me individually injury at royalpath.network um there's been some good stuff people have really and and honestly really checked me on some of the stuff that i said and I, and I think a pretty fruitful way i think that there's actually been like oh it's good to be accountable to an audience sometimes because they'll definitely check you on stuff and i'm cool with that um and whenever we try and mention music so i'm sure some wu-tang is going to go on our uh, oh yeah playlist tonight um so that's on spotify and apple music's royal path podcast playlist something like that um so if you uh the scola coffee please look into it link in the description scola coffee is coffee made uh at our school mount tabor made um there in association with our parish saint mary's um uh, please check them out. Same with Mount Tabor. It's a school that we have going over here uh, at St. Mary's. It's absolutely fantastic. I have a kid going there. Absolutely wonderful. Um, so, uh, Jack, you're killing it. Oh, my gosh. Still, just every time, every time I see the icon that he's chosen, I'm like, that's it. That's the one. Like, that's absolutely what that needed to be. Um, and then I think that that's it. Um, okay. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye.